So we want to look into the uh, uh, first the meaning of Kaddish and why and how is it uh, recited in the synagogue. So as we said, usually people associate it with, uh, with mourning, with avilud, but we have Kaddish and Tefillah even when there are no avilim. So originally the, uh, the concept of Kaddish was a short prayer that was said at the end of a learning session. <laughs> people, people would come to the synagogue only, uh, you know, there was no, not everybody came to regular prayers. And once in a while there were uh, Torah classes for the masses. And people would come, uh, usually Shabbat afternoon or uh, during the month of Nisan and Tishrei, there were large gatherings of people coming, uh, coming to study Torah. And after they would finish the study of Torah, they would say the Psukim Yehe Shemei Rabba Mevarach Le'alam Le'almei Almaya May the great name of Hashem be blessed for forever and ever. And then they added to it also a prayer that uh, praises the study of Torah and all that. And the rabbis commented on that, on that practice of saying the Kaddish. This is two thousand years ago, right? Uh, before Kaddish was part of the tefillah. The rabbi said, They said that the, the world is sustained because of the Kaddish, which is recited on Kedushat uh, Sidra, on Shabbat afternoon when people study together, and on those gatherings, right? What they meant was, not that the Kaddish per se, the actual Kaddish, but the fact that people come to classes and learn, and then they could go and apply this knowledge. And... This is also an, an important thing to, to have in mind when you think when you speak about Torah study, you know, because a lot of people associate Torah study with some kind of abstract, tech, you know, technical study. Let's learn uh, the halachot, or let's run through Hoku Israel. Or, but the ideal of the Torah is that we learn and we take the message and we apply it to our daily life. That's why the, the rabbis always speak about uh, constant learning of Torah at a young age. Because they realize once you, once you get to a certain age, you have to go work, provide for your family, uh, do whatever you have to do in life. So how can you study Torah constantly? If you apply the message of Torah to your daily life, then every act, everything you do, business, commerce, uh, family, education, it's all part of, uh, it's informed by, by the ideas of Torah. So let's look at the Kaddish for a second and, and read, read through it and explain it and then... We'll see uh, how it is associated with Avelut. So the first phrase is Yid Gadal Vid Kadash the, the words are very similar to Hebrew, because Aramaic is a sister language. So it's from the Gadol Vekadosh. Let the great name of Hashem be Gadol Vekadosh, great and sanctified. Now, sanctified is not holy, it means that it's, it's distinct, uh, removed from us. And that is the, the, the concept of uh, our relationship with Hashem are on two different levels. One is, and we say it in Hashem Shevetecha, Karov Hashem lechol korav lechol asher kerov be'emet. You could feel this closeness with God immediately wherever you are. On the other hand, we say, Kadosh, 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 Hashem is what? God is far removed from us. Um, so we constantly have to balance that. We realize that we try to imitate uh, or emulate Hashem in everything we do, but we should be careful not to identify God with the with human emotions, like the way uh, the way we behave, because some people do that, you know, and they uh, they perceive God as their own in their own image, and then they this is how they treat other people, because they think God would have wanted to do that. So the when you say Gadol of Kadosh, it's like, it says keep the your connection with God to yourself. And let other people experience that in their own way, and don't you don't come and tell them this is what God wants and He imposes it on you. Like we speak about uh, praising God's name in the world which He created according to His will, and where He will make His kingdom reign, and He will bring His salvation, Yeshua. Uh, Yatzmah will make it sprout or flourish. Vikarev Meshihe and will bring the Mashiach uh, soon. And that is obviously we start from the end. The the Yamlich Malchute Yatzmah Pukanei Karev Meshihe. Those three speak about the future. 
we, we wait for the time where when we speak about the kingdom of God in, in Judaism, because it has a certain connotation in uh, Christianity, in Judaism is the idea is uh, that there will be peace and harmony in the world, that everybody will respect each other. Because once everybody recognizes that we're created in the image of God, there's mutual respect. Then you know that as human being, no one is better uh, than another. And that's the idea of coming of Mashiach, that there, are, there will be no wars, <coughs> no strife, no crime, etc. Yatzmah <coughs> Purkane is the more immediate uh, need of the Jewish people. Purkan is, is salvation. And it was uh, especially important to people who lived under the, uh, the rule of, uh, of other nations. When you are uh, you know, oppressed by, by other nations, the idea of Yatzmah Purkane, of being free from that, is, uh, is extremely important. And thank God we were able, because of that hope, to get there. And then, that, that, is, that we speak about the past, or actually the present. We say that God created the world according to His will, meaning that He wanted, and that's, a, that's a, uh, even the word will, when we speak about God, is difficult, because when we say that God wants something, that means that God needs something, right? And when some God is all-powerful, so how can He need anything? So that's more speaking in our language. We say will, will is different than want. Yeah, we had this right. discussion once. Yeah. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's just linguistics. No matter how right. we go around it, we will always get to the same problem. What? Uh, how was the what was it, the universe or God before the creation of our world, and what was afterwards? And we have to assume that there was no change. Then, then why was the world created? So when we say God created the world according to His will, we acknowledge that there are certain things that we don't understand. We as humans, we want to know everything. We want to be in control of everything, right? That's why, I, I, for example, I don't like to be on a roller coaster because that's why I feel completely out of control. It freaks me out, right? Yeah. And so if, you, but that's right. But that's a lot of other I know. So yeah, but that's a choice. <laughs> but some like when when so when it comes to flying, we almost have no choice today, yeah. right? And that's why a lot of you also are nervous about flying more than driving, even though driving is more dangerous, right? Why are we afraid when we fly? Because we're not in control. You realize all of a sudden, wow, I'm in a metal uh, contraption between heaven and earth, right? Depending on the skills of, of two or three people and all the technicians that work on the plane. I hope they did the right. You know, the, my, uh, my wife's cousin is a professor of uh, robotics and, uh, and statistics in, uh, in Bar-Ilan University. Very, very smart guy. But he's afraid of flying. Right, so one time when he came here, I was like, finally he came to America, visit us. I said, Avi, why are you afraid of flying? You know that uh, the the plane before it takes off, it goes through very very meticulous uh, inspection. It, it says, yeah, I know. A lot of these technicians study under me in the university, and because I know them, I'm afraid of flying. <laughs> right. So, but I mean, just in general, this is the, the whole idea of right when we say the we say God created the world according to His will, and He knows, uh, and He runs it. So we, uh, we within this frame, within this uh, system, we do whatever is within our power, which is to do good deeds and help other people. Then we say, "Behayechon of uh, meaning that that salvation and the coming of Mashiach and the, the, the perfect world that we wait for will come when? Not at the end of days, but in your life, in your days, and in the life of all, like in, during the lifetime of all, all, all the nation of Israel. This agala has nothing to do with the stroller in Hebrew. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, in, in Aramaic, it means fast. Also in Arabic, Bil'ajal. Uh, do we say swift? Right, swift, fast, right. So it means swiftly in in uh, in, in our days. Yeah, larger. Um, they say in Arabic, "Al min shaitan." You know, this is the, uh, the you know uh, being uh, you know hasty. Is it? Bidriya, bidriya, bidriya. Yeah. So you could say "Bakadish bidriya was man karivim wamen." It's okay. They're all good. It's good. Um, so. And again, this is interesting. You know, Jews said this for, for, for thousands, two thousand years. In many cases, they didn't think they have any hope. But the, the, the ability to say it kept people, you know, moving on. Uh, then the next one is, This is again, this is pure 
prayer that when you translate it to English doesn't even sound good because the synonyms work nicely in Hebrew or in Aramaic. We say, may the great name of God be blessed forever and ever. Yidbarach, it will be blessed. Yishtabach, praised. Yitpa'ar, glorified. Yitobam, will be above all. Yitnasei, tadar, yitali, talal. All these are synonyms, synonyms to be above all. Now, Shmei de Kucha Berichu, the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the, uh, the Holy One, blessed be He. Right? So, God doesn't need all that. We, that doesn't, God doesn't need us to worship Him and to bow down to Him and to say, you're so great. He doesn't have this, uh, uh, you know, inferiority complex. He doesn't need us to praise Him. The reason we praise God is for us. Because when we acknowledge, when all of us acknowledge that there is an entity that is so far removed from us and so greater than us, then we feel compelled to do the right thing. So it's not about God, it's really about us. Robert, you had a question? Why don't they insist on keeping it in Aramaic? No, so they didn't insist in keeping it in Aramaic. In this is just inertia. This is just, it's a good question. The reason why it's in Aramaic is actually, I mean, in later generations, some people said that the angels don't understand Aramaic. So when you pray in Aramaic, you pray directly to God. But this is really, uh, <clears throat> this is, you know, I would say it's, it borders on idolatry almost. This, to think that the angels, I mean the whole concept of angels is in itself complicated, but to think that you need someone to deliver your prayer to God, complete nonsense. You pray, you pray immediately to God. Right? Even today when you go to the right to the tzaddikim to get brachot, it's, you could go directly to God if you want. You don't need to go to a tzaddik, you don't need to go to, to a holy site to pray. It helps you be in, a, in the right mood to do the tefillah, but you don't need to channel your tefillah through anyone, directly to God. So the real reason was that when the Kaddish was instituted, people didn't speak Hebrew. The rabbis, the scholars spoke Hebrew, but the, most of the people spoke Aramaic. So that is the English of the past, right? So ideally, people today should have said the Kaddish in English. But if they don't, because it's very difficult to change, especially in the synagogue, it's difficult to change. Um... And also, at a certain point, the Kaddish took life of its own. When you say the words, even though you don't understand them, you realize, you feel like, you know, I did something important, which it is, because it now becomes part of our uh, shared experience as a nation. So that's the second part. Um, then we say, May these blessings be above all blessings, songs, and praises that we say in the world, again, it's important for us to have this uh, feeling of reverence, but we also add the word nehamata, which is comfort. So here's the association with Averu, the morning, and what we say with that, uh, that the fact that we know that there is a system, that there is someone who runs the world, in a way, soothes us, it gives us some uh, comfort and solace by knowing that uh, there is... Even if we don't fully understand the reason, there is a reason. So this is the first half of Kaddish. We'll do the next half tomorrow.